doing guys? This is Declan Nation Dan here. Cosmic Charlie, how you doing guys? What's going on guys? I just want to say thank you for all you guys that have been liking us on our Facebook page um, and our YouTube page. Uh, you guys have been outstanding in a uh, couple of weeks. Subscribe and like guys. There'll be a link down here. Yep. Subscribe. Link. Um, you guys have been great. You guys have been so, so supportive and this is going to continue to, to hopefully build this to something that Hopefully we could uh, absolutely gonna continue. You know, continue. Um, like Charlie and I have known each other for thirty plus years, Definitely. and uh, you know it's it's amazing how something like an, an astronomy night can actually bring us together, re reconnect right. after, exactly. after so many years of not seeing each other. Exactly. So, um, so basically, what we wanted to do when we started this off was to make this um, experience. Uh, I, I noticed when I was starting uh, using telescopes that there was a lot of technical stuff on there that. That we really couldn't Jar understand jargon, yeah. You know, it might as well have been a foreign language. It was, it was horrible. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do is not only to reinforce my learning. I don't know everything, and I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make believe I know everything for a video. But you know, and this, I know less. But this is part of a learning experience for everybody. Uh, so what we want to do today is uh, start at the beginning, guys. Totally. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna start at the beginning here. Uh, like I said, eventually, you know, we're going to get some interviewees on here. We're going to have some people interviewing. and uh, But right now, yeah, like Dan was saying, Declaration Dan here was saying, we want to let you guys know, like, where you can start and how to start. So, the beginning, pair of binoculars. You don't need a telescope right now, guys, to start enjoying astronomy and going outside and looking at the night sky. I'm going to let Dan talk a little more about him, but a pair of binoculars, guys, will get you started. Yeah, this is definitely one of the things that you if you don't want to spend a lot of money, um, you can spend a lot of money on a set of binoculars. You can spend upwards to over $1,000 on a set. Uh, however, a set like this, which is actually the uh, Celestron Skymaster, the, uh, the non-pro version of this, um, under 100 bucks. I think these are $99 or $89 at this point. You can, you can even use guys to tell uh, binoculars you might have sitting around your house or a hunting pair of binoculars, a little pair of bushnells or something you have around your house. But uh, like Dan was saying, these are the Celestron Sky Masters. Actually, we don't recommend this pair of Celestron. If you're going to get the Celestron, to get the pro version. But uh, Dan's going to continue talking about the stuff. But before we go any further, we're going to be showing a lot of equipment here. Uh, I just want to make sure that we are not uh, affiliated with any of these products as far as endorsed by anybody, guys. Or any, yeah, so we're not. We're, you know, this is actually stuff that's at, out of our personal stash um, that we want to show you guys on on how things works and how things work. And basically, we're going to start off with the binoculars and move our way forward. Okay, guys. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off, no. Dan, but a, a, a binoculars, a planisphere. Just looks like a big circle, guys. A piece of plastic. Uh, you know they have them for your latitude, where you live. You know what degrees latitude you are, uh, or a, a planetarium program. You can get something like uh, Stellarium or what else? Uh, Starry Night. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of free actually planetarium programs on the web. You can get Stellarium. I use Starry Night. Uh, you can you can go crazy. There's a bunch more, but uh, or a plain old plan. Planisphere, but they like might look a little bit intimidating to somebody who's new, you know, trying to line it up, you know, your time, your date, and hold it up to the sky, and that's what you should be Face seeing. A certain yeah, way. <laughs> that's what you should be seeing in your night sky. But uh, a free planet, you know, planetarium program like Stellarium or something we mentioned, Carts through Custer Seal, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Starry Night, like we were saying, you can find them on the internet. Uh, maybe we'll put some links down below. I, we probably will, at least do maybe one or two of them. And if you want, if you want, also, I mean, for I think for free, uh, Celestron has Sky Portal you could use. Oh yeah, it's a great program. Um, I actually have it on my uh, lap, my laptop that's here right now. I have it on. Yeah, and if you, if you have either, uh, and, and we're going a little bit off t off skew here, but uh, um, if you have a, a Celestron Evolution or a Celestron that's able to be uh, uh, connected to Wi-Fi, you can actually use that to control your telescope. Correct. And you can actually do it on the next door I have as well. I have the to buy that little hand. dongle, that little. You know, celestial celestial little, dongle. Correct. Yeah. All right. So Dan's gonna continue on, guys, with the next one we have in line here for you. Right. So binoculars, a, a, a plain old planisphere. You know, a, a little plastic this. You can buy a, a planetary program, or if, if you know about the night sky already, guys, and you just want to get into start looking at it, a pair of binoculars. Uh, just remember, with binoculars, um, it's really for very wide field, low power. 
Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot of the sky. And don't get ones because they're the biggest. No. Because unless you have a mount, a parallelogram mount or something to hold these things, try holding something that weighs, I don't know, 10 or 12 pounds. Steady. Steady for, for right. a couple of minutes. Yes, you um, definitely can put a tripod on them, guys. Yeah, they have a little screw on the bottom, a lot of the pads, and you can screw them right on a tripod. But yeah, if you're getting something big and heavy like Dan said, think about the weight. And... Exactly. All right, so where are we at now, Dan? So now we go to... Oh yeah, you, you guys, you bought the binoculars, you love it, you want to see the planets closer, you want to see nebula, galaxies, or anything like that. Dan's got the next step in line for you guys. You, you, if you've got the binoculars, you're happy with it, you want to pursue it, Dan's going to tell you what to do next. Go, for, go, go to the next one. So the next one is your basic, uh, you're going to have to excuse me for a little bit, it's a little outfitted a little different, this is outfitted for, for photography, there's no diagonal here. Um, or eyepiece. Or eyepiece for that matter, it's got, it's got an uh, auto guider on the back. Camera. Um, yes. So your refractor, this is your basic looking telescope. This is what you would see on all the videos. You don't see any videos of anything else except for a telescope that looks like this. Because people get confused a little bit because something that looks like a cannon, which we'll show you later, is actually a telescope too. But this is your normal telescope and it works with lenses. Okay, so there's a lens in the front and there's, uh, depending on the telescope you get, you can have a whole bunch of lenses and different class types in the middle too. Okay, but it's your normal telescope. Now, all the light does is goes through the lenses, up and out through the eyepiece. That's all there is to it. Bounces off another mirror inside the star diagonal and goes straight up into your eyepiece. Correct. It's reflected into your eyepiece. Yeah. So, um, the one thing with reflect refractors is is that it's very low maintenance. There is no sort of collimation. collimation. We'll go over that when we show the next scope. There's no, if you're out of collimation on a refractor, really, you really want to send it to somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, refract, uh, reflectors um, are very easy to do as far as collimating them and making sure that the uh, elements are aligned. What Dan is saying, guys, low maintenance, really no maintenance, keep it clean, you know, you don't want to throw it around, but you can have these in the back of your car in a little case and they can sure. bang around and not co come out of collimation or alignment, as Dan's going to talk about later with the reflector, but... Very durable, something especially like this. You can put it in a little bag, have it in the back seat of your car, a little tripod or stand. You can be up, set up, looking at something within minutes. Yeah, the, the one backlog of the refractor is the bigger you get. As an aperture, the size of the lens. Yeah, the guys. bigger the lens that you get, the more, way more expensive it could be. Oh yeah, something <laughs> like something like this, guys. Just a telescope might be a hundred, a hundred and something dollars. Up to, Dan's talking about a bigger lens, you know, something five, six inches could be well into the few thousands of dollars, up to, you know, $10,000 for, a, you know, 150 millimeter, 140 yeah. millimeters, like $5,000. Yeah. I mean, you could spend, you could spend a, lot a lot of money. That. You could spend a, for a six inch Takahashi, it's like 11 right. grand. Yeah, but you don't so, need to spend so, that, guys. A couple so, hundred bucks, you can get out there and look at the nice guy. You know, which is a good segue to the next one, which is called the Newtonium Reflector. Well, let me hand that one to you, Dan. Um, now, this, a little bit more. Guys, but being somebody starting out, not sure if they want to stay with it, and, you know, going to, you know, do more with it as, as far as, like, maybe photography, but get just a basic reflector, guys. For a couple of hundred bucks, you know, you can get an Affinity, a Ryan, a Mead, Celestron, you know, a basic uh, refractor for a few hundred bucks, guys, and you can get some pretty amazing views from planets Absolutely. to nebula to galaxies. You can see a lot of stuff. You'd be surprised. Uh, Dan does, I just want to mention, guys, Dan does work at a telescope store on Wednesdays in uh, Stony Brook, New York, out on Long Island, New York. We are going to put the link down to it. Uh, it's called Camera Concepts and Telescope Solutions. They're in Stony Brook, New York. We're going to put a link down below in the a subscription, uh, the uh, information area. Subscribe and like, like I said before. Uh, subscribe, like, a little check there, and uh, we're going to bring up the next telescope now. Okay, so now this one, a little bit more maintenance, um, but a lot less as far as cost is concerned. A yeah. lot less. Um, you're talking 5 inch one of these, or an 8 inch one of these, or a 10 inch one of these, it's going to cost significantly yeah. less than a, a refractor. Less. A lot less. Say a 10 inch one of these, I don't know. 
couple hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. For a a ten inch refractor? Forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Twenty Forget thirty thousand dollars or more. Ridiculous. More. More. I don't even know if you can find one. Yeah. You would need a flatbread just to figure. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have a six inch refractor in. We're gonna show you that in, too. Uh, camera concepts. I'll throw a picture of that for you. Yeah. And that's that's ridiculous. Um, but this, the reason why that this Re is reflector cheaper, telescope. Yeah. So it's a Newtonian reflector. Um, the reason why that this is cheaper is unlike a um, unlike a refractor. It's a hollow tube inside. I can put my hand in here. Don't do this at home. But 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 I can put my hand in here, and, and there's, it's just a hollow tube. Now what the light does in here, and it works with mirrors, not lenses. So it's okay? cheaper. So it's cheaper to make. The glass is a lot more expensive, a lot more labor intensive. Right. To make the mirror. Don't get me wrong. For the for those of you that are mirror makers out there, I'm not trying to take anything away from you because those, you, those of you guys great. that, that grind your own mirrors are unbelievable. Because that's a that's a labor of love. Let me tell you. Um, but it, it has two mirrors. It's got a mirror at the back, so the light travels to the front, hits the mirror in the back, and then right behind these three screws is another mirror. It's a secondary mirror, it's called. Tiny little angled mirror, guys. And all that does is angle it so that the light can come out of the, the eyepiece here. Okay? And that's why it makes it so, so the collimation on this is very, very important. The alignment, guys. So that collimation. this mirror here and this mirror here need to be perpendicular to the eyepiece coming out. So the light's got to come in, out, and out. Does that make sense? I so. Yeah, it sure does. That makes sense? It's, it's confusing, guys. It just basically means that the mirrors have to all be aligned each other to give you the most clear, sharp image, you know, in-focus image that you can get out of the telescope. And you can do it with a laser. You can do it with a, a Cheshire. It's called a Cheshire eyepiece. It's very cheap, but it's very difficult to do. I, I mean, at least for me, it was. A lot I, of people use the laser yeah. collimator. You put it in the eyepiece, and you know they do it from there. I don't have a reflector yet. I did actually before I bought my telescope, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, I was kind of turned off by the fact that yeah, I, I can't maybe put it in the back of my car, go down a bumpy road. You know that it would have to be aligned. But so for somebody new, like we talked about before. You might want to go with the refractor, the first one, you know, the typical telescope everybody thinks of, you know, from being a kid or in pictures. But yeah, these are great telescopes, but they do need to be collimated, which means they need to be aligned. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people are, are scared of collimation. Yeah, I guess, and I, I know you're going to show me eventually, it's yeah. not that hard to do, it's, but... It's really, actually... But for a newbie, it did kind of throw me off. Yeah, especially, well, you have a, a Schmidt, I mean, which we're going into. Yeah, we'll talk about um, mine a little bit. And it's the same thing, that has mirrors exactly. and lenses. Correct. So, you know, you got to They do sure. need to be aligned, but they're a little bit more durable, let's say. Yeah, they could take a little bit more. They could take a little more power. Right. Yeah, they'll definitely take it because it's a solid tube. It's, you know, you can't put your hand in there like I did with this right. one. Again, don't do that with yours, please. No, don't touch the lenses or go near them. But, um, yeah, so that does require collimation. All of the Newtonians and Dobsonians all require okay. um, a collimation. And yeah. once you get it down, it's nothing, right? You could have a collimation done within five minutes after, okay. once you see a star. See, I'm gonna need to learn. See I need to learn how to collimate my uh, Schmidt Casper, which we're gonna talk about next. And we're gonna we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna do another video but on collimation. But guys, yeah, later so on. four inches up to what 20, 50 inches you can get with uh, a reflective telescope. They can go from anywhere from. Well, the Newton. I don't know if you want a Newton a Dobsonian reflector. Yeah, you can go up to fifty inches. Dobsonian yeah. meaning, guys, it's a it's a Newtonian reflector on a Dobsonian type of mount. Which basically it does move by just altitude and azimuth, I believe. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, alt and az, up, down, up, down, right, left, left and right. Yeah, left and right. Uh, but so this is uh, called uh, a Newtonian reflector. Uh, if you you might hear Dobsonian, what that is is a Newtonian reflector on that type of stand, that base. Like I said, altitude, azimuth, stand, up, down, left and right. But all right, so we're gonna now we're gonna put this to the side. Uh, Dan's gonna actually either put a picture up or we're gonna put a link up to a video that has me. The Schmidt. Yeah, showing my picture of my telescope. But uh, I have a uh, Celestron Nexstar 8SC Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Dan uh, should have mentioned he does have a refractive telescope, the first type we talked about. But he has called an apochromatic uh, telescope, which is a very expensive one. It, uh, you don't get the color aberration to happen. You got like blue tinge sometimes you get on a cheaper refractor. But that's definitely in another video, guys. We'll get further into that. But. Uh, so Dan has his, you know, astrophotography, and he, it would be his observing telescope as well. 
is a refractotype. I have a cheap, cheaper uh, little 102 Infinity uh, Mead refractor, and I also have the next telescope that Dan's going to introduce right now. He's going to either put a picture up or he's going to put a link up and show. Yeah, so the Schmidt cast screen, as you see here, <laughs> or oh here. wait, not yet, but it'll be there. Um, <laughs> um, it looks like a cannon, and as you see in the picture, um, like this kind of blown up a lot fatter, something like this, you know. Yeah, they'll, they'll see a picture of it. There you go. Um, so, so it looks like, a, it really looks like like a cannon, pretty much. I, I always call it a cannon. I've called it a cannon for years. Um, I know you have one. I've, I've actually, my, one of my first telescopes was an 8-inch Schmidt. Um, and it's a great telescope because it gives you the all-around kind of, it's good for almost anything. That's it's very versatile. It. That's why I got it, guys. Um, it's, you can put a Barlow on it, which we'll talk about later, regarding, uh, you know, if you want to do planetary uh, uh, planetary photography. Um, it, you could also put a field flattener or reducer on it. So I'll use it for deep space objects like I do. I'm starting to get into it with Dan's help. Uh, you, put a, you use a, uh, a 6.3? Yes, yeah, correct. Slash strong. Yeah. yeah, so it's a 6.3. And what that does is it makes your telescope faster. And that means it gathers light quicker. So what that means is it makes your your um, your imaging, your pho photographs, less of a time to get the same photograph. So so a, a one minute exposure at f10 is now taking you 30 seconds or 40 seconds at f6.3 because you're gathering the light a lot quicker. Right? And it does give you a wider field of view, guys. Yeah, it absolutely. Does. It's a uh, it's called a focal reducer. Corrector or field, field flattener yeah. or corrector, yeah. Exactly. There's a few names that I'll throw in there with it, but uh, so yeah, I have a Schmidt cast grain. Uh, I did buy it because it's a great all-around telescope, versatile, you know, good for planetary and deep space, you know, objects, deep sky objects. Uh, and I just want to give a big shout out to Chuck from Chuck's sure. Astrophotography. Uh, Chuck, actually, you were an influence in me buying that scope because I know that's where you started. But uh, everybody, yeah, Chuck's Astrophotography. You can check them out on YouTube. I believe it's, uh, yeah, yeah, Chuck Astro. Just, just look up Chuck's Astro photography. photography. Believe me, you'll see the guy with all the uh, subscribers and all the likes. You'll know it's him. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so Schmidt Cassegrain, uh, very versatile telescope. Uh, Dan's going to talk about the light path maybe on that a little bit. Sure. So so with the Schmidt Cassegrain, it uses a combination of lenses and mirrors. Okay. Um, so it travels through the front corrective lens. Okay. Okay. Goes through the lens, and then there's a mirror in the back. Mirror in the back reflects it to a secondary, just like you saw in the reflector. In the reflector, hits a secondary, which is actually mirror, if you guys. take a look, mirror. it's right behind your corrective lens. Correct. Okay, so you correct it, it bounces from the mirror to the and then out through a tube in the back end of the Schmidt Cassegrain well, your to your eyepiece and your, your diagonal. Correct. And uh, so you're literally having the light bounce back three times. Like one. Two, three times, and, and you get a longer focal length and a shorter package, which is a lot. The, one of the main benefits of yeah. having that kind of telescope because it's just you're getting a longer focal length and a short package. And a short package, so it's a lot more. If you were to get that, like a Schmidt Cassegrain 2032 right. millimeter, yeah, no, 2032 um, focal length, focal length in a in a uh, in a refractor, let's It'd be say, like, what five foot long or more? Lo longer. My 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 one twenty seven is about five foot four wow. four foot long, and that's only nine hundred. Yeah, so it'd be maybe ten feet. So long it's like, it'd be like ten feet long. Yeah, you would need some so, long too. So so you know th th that's one of the benefits of having it. Now there's also a spin off of that, and I'm not hundred percent sure which was invented first. I'm pretty sure Schmidt was, uh, but there's a Maxitov. Cassegrain. Um, and that has a concave corrective lens. Which gives you a, a slower telescope, which means it's it's you don't get the, the, the brightness of everything, but for planetary, you get more detail. You're getting a lot more detail. Okay. You're getting a lot more detail. So trade off. You're getting less. You got less light. Maybe which is not as good for DSO deep space objects. If, no, you're right. Me if I'm wrong. Nope. Uh, but yeah, so you're getting more detail though. Because planets are, are, are super bright to begin with. Correct. correct. So you want to knock that down a little bit, or else you're gonna over, when you're doing astrophotography, you're gonna overexpose real quick. Meaning Even if you're, you're doing video, it's gonna look like a white blob, guys. Or you're not gonna see any detail in the pictures. It's gonna be all blown That's, out. It's, it's gonna, gonna look, look like a bright light. Exactly. Okay, so we got yeah Schmidt Cassegrain. We talk about Maxitov Cassegrain. Those are two types of uh, telescopes. Uh, 
and I believe they're called uh, catadioptric telescopes. Okay, yep. So we they've refracted the typical telescope everyone thinks of, what sees in the department stores. We did the reflectors, which is this one. Needs to be collimated a line, but it's not as scary as Dan's telling us it's no. not. Uh, we're talking about the one I have, which we're going to show a picture. Schmidt Cassegrain and Maxitop Cassegrain. Now Dan's going to talk about the next telescope. Uh, the Dobsonian. Now, what? I actually met the, uh, the uh, inventor. Oh, really? John Dobson, um, who passed away a couple years ago, unfortunately. We lost a really, really, really cool guy. Um, very famous, and he started. If uh, I correct me if I'm wrong, actually, you probably don't know. But um, he started in the streets of San Francisco, and he got he got tired of equatorial mounds and all this crazy stuff going on. So he, you know, he knew about the alt as he didn't invent alt as. Right. But what he did Altitude was an azimuth guy. What he did was he he made a big telescope. He made his own mirror, plopped it in the box. Put tubes, like put, truss, put rods, a, truss, yeah, truss tubes, they're right. called, they're called truss tubes, put them in there, and then he just put a top on it with a secondary and an eyepiece. And then he took it out, and he took it out to the streets of San Francisco, if it was clear, and just dragged it. Wow. This was like in the early 70s, if I remember right. Um, just started dragging people and said, hey, come on, take a look. Look wow, at the view wow. of the night sky. And he started like that. Okay, guys, basically, I don't mean to cut you over no, again, but yeah. Uh, a Dobsonian, guys, is really a type of a mount. But if, a Dobsonian, oh, Dobsonian usually means that you have a reflected telescope on a special type of mount. They're made of wood, they're made of metal, but a Dobsonian, you might hear that. Someone says, oh, I have a Dobsonian. They have a reflector-type telescope yep. on, a, on a Dobsonian mount. So that's what it means. But you'll hear people say, oh, I got a Dob. Yeah. If they, if they, that's what they mean. Uh, a, a Dob, uh, like the picture you see here. Right. It's, it's very much like Charlie said, uh, on an Altaz mount, um, and basically it's a, a strictly manual, but the, the, even though that requires collimation, as do the Schmidt and the, and the reflector, um, you get the biggest bang for your buck on right. the Dobsonian. You can get big a 10 inch Dobsonian for less than 600 bucks. Right, they're big mirrors. It's all stricted, no computer, no nothing, it's all manual, and there's other stuff out there that we can talk about with this. Push twos, go twos, and that kind of go stuff. Go twos, yeah, they have go twos on the Dobsonian mount. So yeah, you have a, a hand controller with you know objects in the database, and you can tell it where to go. And some actually now they just came out. Ryan has one now that well might not have just came out, but they have motorized Dobsonian yeah. mounts. Yeah, the go twos. So it's a yeah. go to on a Dobsonian mount, which is pretty cool. I'd like to check it out. But uh, all most of the Dobsonians are guys are push two. Yeah, so you're gonna push it up, you know. And you're going to push it left and right, you know. But, uh, yeah, like Dan said, we'll talk about go-tos and stuff like that on other videos. Go-to meaning that it's on motors, guys. You do, you know, a polar alignment or a star alignment or a line on a planet. You tell uh, what you want to look at. It's going to point there and hopefully track it in the sky for you. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. I think uh, we're going to wrap it up right now. Uh, do you we're going to show anything else? We got any more links we're going to put in? Or? No. Oh, let's talk. Yeah. Guys, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry I'm rambling here. We're going to talk about something now very important. Very important. When you go get a refractor or you go buy a Mead, Orion, Celestron, whatever type of, you know, if you're deciding you're getting a telescope, they're going to come with eyepieces, usually one, sometimes two, up, up to three eyepieces in the box with it. Especially, you know, a package deal that comes with the tripod, the telescope, and everything in one box, you know. Basically a beginner package. You're going to get a couple eyepieces with it. They're going to go anywhere. They can range from they anywhere. Think they're usually crap. They, but they'll get you going. <laughs> at, at least I find the the lower-powered ones, and we'll talk about that in a second, are better than the higher-powered yeah, ones. Yeah, usually. Uh, okay, so you're going to get a couple eyepieces that come with the kit, usually. One, sometimes two or three. But anywhere like that, you're going to get the eyepieces. They might even give you a, what's called a Barlow lens. Sorry, they, they might give you a, a Barlow lens on it. Uh, what that is, is I'm, I'm going to let Dan take over and talk about it, but let's just say if your uh, telescope came with a 26 millimeter eyepiece, a 26 millimeter eyepiece, and let's say it came with a 9 millimeter eyepiece, and a Barlow lens. You have to make it an odd number, didn't you? And, it, and <laughs> a Barlow lens. It might come with a cheap 2 times 2x plastic, you know, 2 times that means, uh, Barlow lens. So I'm, I'm going to let Dan take over the rest from here. Well, what a Barlow essentially does is it doubles your eyepiece arsenal. Um, 
you can get Barlow's, which could go from 2x, which means two times the power, 3x, three times the power, uh, two and a half x, right. up to five. All right, so you got a two and a half here. What I have a two and a half and a two. That's a big two, guys. That's Look a two inch. One. So there's, there's, there's two, two inch, different types two of times. eyepieces. Yeah, there's two different types of eyepiece barrels. Okay, you got your one and a quarter inch, which is the ones that your telescopes usually come with. The cheaper ones, um, you know, standard. I'm not, I don't mean cheaper by any ways, but no, it's a, no. But me, the cheaper ones do come with the one and a quarter, but so could a two thousand dollar telescope. Uh, Cheaper meaning what you're probably going to get when you start or maybe something that Correct. you bought in a department store, which you don't want to do. Yeah, so, and then you got your two-inch barrels. So now, this is a two-inch barrel, okay? This is a 17-millimeter Type 4 uh, Teleview Nagler um, with the... <laughs> which is a great eye With a great eye piece. I, I love yeah. this eye piece. It comes with the uh, retractable not eye cheap, relief. Not cheap, guys. Not cheap. I, have, um, I don't have any Teleview stuff yet. You will. You will. I know. Um... But and this is these are all actually made by Teleview. Uh, these are both power mates. Um, this one comes with an adapter to, so you can fit your one two inch eyepiece or, or your one and a quarter. quarter inch eyepiece. Correct. Um, so basically, what these Talk do is, it, yeah. um, if you put a take the two inch, the two inch two X eyepiece with, you, with the twenty six millimeter. It came with a twenty six millimeter eyepiece. Okay. So now you're doing a two X. So basically, what you want to do is. Slash that 26 into 2. 13. Now you got a 13 and a 26 using the same eyepiece with One eyepiece with a Barlow just became two eyepieces. So watch your magnifications. That's the point I think Dan's trying to get here, guys. So those three eyepieces or two eyepieces either just turned into four eyepieces or six eyepieces. So this is a 2X, but I'm going to use this as a, uh, an example because it's smaller than that yep. one. This is a two times Barlow, so let's make it a two a two times ball which is probably going to come with your beginner or you know whatever refractor you buy uh so we just dropped a, a 26 millimeter eyepiece into this it just became a 13 millimeter eyepiece and what that kind of means guys i'm going to let dan explain this better as well is it doubles it doubles the magnification okay. or it doubles the focal length of the telescope it, you can look at it either way it's doubling the magnification or doubling the focal length of your telescope. Uh, you can, you know, explain it either way. Okay, so, so, all right, so the 2X eyepiece, so let's say you have a 1,000 millimeter. Let's make it, let's make it a 20, because 20 would be easy. Okay. Okay, so a 1,000 millimeter eyepiece. Correct. A 1,000 millimeter telescope with a 20 millimeter eyepiece. Correct. Okay, 20 divided by 1,000 is 50. Correct. Okay, so that 50X out of that 20 millimeter eyepiece in the thousand millimeter scope would yield you a 50 magnification. Correct guys, that's the X number meaning yeah, the, the, the magnification power you just got out of that 25 just became 50. It, so think of it, yeah, so if it says it's a two times ballo, think of it, it just doubled the power of the eyepiece. But now here's the kicker guys, du you would think, oh you said it was uh, 26 before, how come double isn't uh, 52? It's the opposite with eyepieces, guys. The lower the number on the eyepiece, the higher Good the point. magnification. So your 26, you would think, you know, oh, the lower the number on the eyepiece. Remember that. So if you have a 26 millimeter and a 9 millimeter, the 9 millimeter is going to give you a smaller field of view most of the time, or you know, a smaller hole, but it's way the magnification is way higher. So remember, smaller number equals higher magnification. You took your 26 millimeter eyepiece, you popped it into two times Barlow, it just became a 13 millimeter. So remember, like I said, lower is higher magnification. And there is a point, guys, where you can have too much magnification. I'll yeah. let Dan talk about that now, actually. Um, yeah, so there's just something called it. useful magnification. Okay. Okay, and you could get that, and it's different for every telescope. Um, so you can get that from whatever your, your telescope developer's website or look up your telescope specs. Um, and it'll be there. It's called useful magnification, and it'll tell you what the maximum magnification. There is a little really... formula trick you can use. I believe it's aperture times four or aperture times fifty. Yeah, I don't. Remember aperture exactly. times fifty. I'll, I'll put... So on my four-inch refract uh, refractor telescope I have at my house, it's two hundred x. I believe it's four inches, which is the aperture, the size of the lens, times fifty. I believe it's two hundred times uh, highest right. useful magnification. I could be totally wrong on that, and if I am, you guys can laugh at that. Yeah, but, uh, feel free to comment on the bottom. Yeah, please and, comment. And any if questions? We make any mistakes at all? Feel free to just 
Yeah. Yell at us at the bottom, say uh, whatever. Right, right. Um, but, you know, we're not perfect, like I said, and we're doing this on the fly, so we're not doing anything like you cutting only, and The only notes that we took is uh, to, to just say what type of telescope that's to it. talk about, <laughs> and that's the only notes we got here. So this is all really, in, really improv. Really ad-libbed, improv, yeah. So. Improvisational all the way. So uh, feel free to write on the bottom, uh, on our, you know, either on our uh, Facebook page. We do get back to everybody on our Facebook Copy page. Copy Charlie and Declination Dan, Facebook. Uh, and We're going to put the link to our Facebook and the YouTube page on our Facebook. is already there. Uh, yep. Thank you guys for all the likes, all the subscribers and everything already. And uh, Dan's going to put a link, like I said, to uh, Camera Concepts and uh, Telescope Solutions in Stony Brook. He works there every Wednesday. Most uh, Wednesdays. Most, okay. <laughs> and Jeff, you got a bunch of great other people over there as well. Uh, like I said, Chuck from Chuck's Astro Photography. Uh, also another person, really great photographer on... Uh, YouTube and everything. Uh, Trevor Jones, yep. Astro Backyard guys. Yep. You can check them out on uh, YouTube as well. Learned a lot from them. Check uh, them out. Both of them are very, very. Uh, uh, I, I just can't get over their, their inspiration <laughs> towards me. It, it made me want to get into this. Yeah, absolutely. At least the astro photography end of it. Uh, they inspired me to go out and you know do it. But uh, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Cosmic Charlie. And I'm Declination Dan. And just remember, guys, keep shooting, keep educating, and keep having fun. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.